greetings. You will have seen, I hope, from an earlier video I posted that I've uh, dragged my flintlock miniatures out of the garage where they've been sitting for about 25 years, painted when I was a teenager, not well, and sprucing them up because Osprey Games has released a lovely little uh, skirmish game where you only need about eight figures aside called The Silver Bayonet, a war game of Napoleonic Gothic horror by Joseph A. McCulloch. You don't need many figures. You've got an elite band of, you know, an A-team basically gathered together with various Napoleonic era skills and, uh, you know, there it says, engineers fight side by side with mystics, occultists and the occasional supernatural creature. So, you know, perfect for flintlock and you go and carry out. You don't just run around killing each other. There are kind of search uh, and discover and destroy missions, all of which look pretty fun. You are supposed to, uh, well, you're anticipated by the rules to use your existing Napoleonic, you know, 28 mil human collection, uh, and North Star produced some fantastic uh, little bespoke figures who uh, m match up with the various uh, characters and character types. But the thing is, my thinking was, you know, I've got this broader program of trying to get stuff out of boxes, sprucing them up, you know, depending on the quality of the paint job, and actually trying to get them on the table, reviving you know, uh, what I've got, rather than becoming a whale for the, you know, the leading uh, gaming companies just trying to get you to buy, you know, the same rule set multiple times and have miniatures that you can only use for that rule set and then get into this weird carousel of nuttiness, frankly, where you're just someone else's income stream. Um, so this is what I've fished out of the garage, all 25 years old, not the best painted, but you know, reasonable basis, and this is where I'm at in terms of painting. I've uh, got a few of the British Orcs, and this is where I'm at. So I thought these painted up really nicely, actually. Again, you know, real old hammer principles, keeping them, you know, keeping details pretty simple, there's not loads of ornate little uh, ZBrush uh, ornate bits and pieces to kind of paint, it's, you know, uh, the view I always take is, you know, these are great because if a person could sculpt them by eye, you can paint them by eye. And, uh, you know, it's hilarious that they chose the Orcs to be British, you know, Wellington calling his own troops the scum of the earth, and they really bring this out in the sculpting. You know, they're all unshaven and long, tangled, matted hair. Looking slightly dishevelled. I don't know why, but black always seems to um, get chipped off. If you are knowledgeable about the Napoleonic period, by all means correct me, but I think that the, uh, the three orcs are basically Scots guards, the ones with the... Uh, frilly white bits on their um, shoulders. And this fellow is an absolute solid piece of, well, he probably is lead. I mean, I don't think they do that anymore, but, you know, this was 1997. Why wouldn't it be? But he's a good chunky guy. Ramshackled as he is. There's your man, star of the show. Shark, as they call him. The South Essex will advance. Right shoulders forward. <laughs> yes, well, obviously it's him. And I must say, they really do come up very well with the, uh, a a new paint job with modern paints, washes. Um, and modern basing materials. I think all three of these are some kind of Grenadier Guards unit, but in Silver Bayonet, I'll just use them as standard infantry. Yeah. 
grenadiers and guards are a bit better at um, avoiding being shot with a slightly higher defence and harder to get killed, I suspect, with a slightly higher health. But infantry are... Um, and infantry are a bit less courageous, as you can see. But uh, infantry are a fair bit cheaper, and I found when calculating a starting uh, crew, you know, it, it was hard to pack in too many particular characters with particular specialities if you didn't have a few infantrymen bulking things out. And I was pleased to be able to fix this fellow. This rifleman. I don't think he's 95th rifles, I think he's 105th rifles. Not that I'm any expert on the British rifleman units of the Peninsular War. And he's a very good sculpt. And would anyone really notice that this is clearly from an Empire um, handgunner sprue to fix the fact that unfortunately after 25 years and being bashed about in many boxes, the tip of his rifle broke off? Nah, I think he's... I think he's alright. And this is some kind of Dragoon officer who I'll be using as a veteran hunter. The flintlock miniature for Shark had even um, modelled the kind of zigzag pattern for the brown on the shark as an officer's pair of trousers but uh, I thought you know it's too fiddly to get into all of that um, I also took the liberty of painting the buttons gold as per the sharp films rather than silver as per the more historically accurate approach here but uh, who gives a monkeys well I must say look at me a button counter already having not even got into proper Napoleonics infectious well, that's it for this one. Please do offer any comments, particularly if you have an understanding of Napoleonic uniforms. And do subscribe if you want to see what else is in the pipeline. Have a great day.